looks like we started. So today we're going to talk about an unusual painting called Atención Perros con Suerte. Um, Herschel is well known for three periods in his career. One of them is called, let's say, the Surrealistic Period. Uh, and then there's the Greek period and the Altiplano Maya period, which is an example here. This is early, what I call early-ish Altiplano Maya. Um, but he also, you know, liked to mess around and do other stuff. Uh, and so he would do what I would call a, you know, a paintings that were not typical of those three periods and other things that he did, but those are the most important ones. Uh, and the one we're going to talk about this is a collage. Um, now, my theory is it's a, a, the, 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 the words Atención Perros con Suerte. It comes from an ad that sells soap uh, for getting fleas out of dogs. Okay. Um, and that soap was called uh, Perro Agradecido, that is the Grateful Dog. And I used it, and my parents used it. Uh, you know, on their on their dogs and cats, um, and so I think that's where that come from. And it's kind of a silly, it's kind of a silly thing that you would put in the paper because obviously dogs and cats don't read the morning newspaper. So you know, it's this Mexican weird humor. Okay. So the title of the work, Atención Perros con Tuerte, is in the center of this mixed media um, uh, painting, I guess you could say. Um, it's the only work that Gershaw's done in which the title of the painting is in the painting itself. Um, and so you can, you can see that there is a lot of line work, um, which is typical of a, a series of paintings that he did, or uh, acrylic paintings. That he did at this time, more or less. This is what it looks like in its entirety. Okay, so the thing to to be aware of is that this is a joke. I mean, atención perros con suerte is a joke because it comes out of a newspaper, right? It's not nothing serious. I mean, it has no serious message or anything. Um, it's and he. It's part of the collage, and he cut it out of the newspaper. Okay, uh, now it's because of the line work and the use of uh, parallel lines and and black ink or India ink. Okay, it's consistent with the work like this, which you did more or less at the same time. Um, okay, you can see this square in the center and a lot of the parallel lines. Um, you know, in this area in the center, all right? And uh, this this period or style of Gershaw is what I call altiplano. Altiplano, literal translation in, in English is high plains. Okay, I guess you could say. And so the altiplano area in Mexico is here, the brown area, uh, and actually refers mostly to the pre-Hispanic cultures <laughs> that were there before before the conquest. Okay, so that included uh, Toltecas, Aztecs, Teotihuacan, este, and others. Okay, um, and I I that's the way I uh, categorize or name this period in his styles called Altiplano. I don't know if anybody else uses it, but archaeologists in Mexico all understand what this means. And Gershaw himself understood what it meant. And he was in contact with people who were archaeologists and who knew a lot about this art, you know, while he lived in Mexico. Um, Covarrubias and people like that. So this is a photograph I took of Teotihuacan in the late 60s and 19, or 1970s, early 1970s. Um, this is toward the Pyramid of the Moon, uh, and it's at the end of the Avenue of the Dead. You can see this series of pyramids that go toward the pyramid. 
Those are along the Avenue of the Dead. And this photograph, in a sense, is in the style of Gershow himself. There's a lot of areas, large areas of, you know, one color or texture, like this brown um, in the front. Uh, and then it has certain areas of the composition which are very detailed and a lot of little squares or diagonal things like those pyramids, okay? And, you know, one, uh, one, one way of viewing what an artist does is that he teaches us to see the world in a certain way. And since I grew up with this, well, I went to Teotihuacan and I photographed Teotihuacan the way I was taught to see by his art. So in a sense, it's kind of interesting is that the reality, things you see in reality informs, like a lot of people like to use that word, informs his art and he uses it as a visual language. And then that way of seeing things in his art, you go back and see reality in a different way. Okay, and that certainly happened to me. Okay. So another thing that's uh, uh, happened at that time is I got this drafting machine when I was in architecture in St. Louis and, and in Missouri, and it was given to me. It was going to be thrown out amongst a bunch of other ones. It was a Bruno, Bruner, whatever it is. Uh, and um, and so I took it home, and, and since my father was a designer and a draftsman, this to him was, you know, a great new instrument to do a different type of art. It was one of the things he did at that time. But Perros con Suerte is sort of, it's not, a, you know, it doesn't use this parallel line so much the way in other ones, but it's part of that period. Okay. <clears throat> so then I did an experiment. I said, well, you know, and people, some people, I'm not said everybody, but some people get a little confused. They say, well, wait a minute, is this thing with all this collage and these figures, he's never done anything like this before. So is, is, this, is this really Gershaw? So I, made the, I did the experiment of renewing, removing the figures to see if it still looked like the Gershaw, like the second one that we saw, the yellow one, uh, the yellow acrylic. And yes, it has all the same elements. I mean, the composition is obviously different because he's putting in there um, these cutouts from the newspapers. Okay, so what newspapers did he cut it out from? And this is, I don't know this for sure, but it's probably the case. I mean, he used to read this newspaper every day. It was, in those days, it was delivered to the house and it was put on is the, 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 the table where he used to have uh, breakfast in the morning. He used to come down and, and have breakfast, usually by himself, and he'd read this newspaper. Um, that was like the daily ritual. This was the newspaper of record of Mexico at the time before the government uh, intervened and took it over. That's a whole other story. But anyway, and this one was published in 1968. All right. And and I'm not sure if this was before or after the government took over the newspaper, right? Now, I just put this in as sort of the typical type of, you know, uh, drawings, graphics that was included in this paper. This is a cartoonist, a much beloved cartoonist named Abel Quesada. And so he used to do these drawings, these, these little cartoons. Okay, here's Mexico in 1970. Actually, he probably wrote this himself. So he wrote it and he did this cartoon, but he is basically best known for his cartoons. So if we zoom into this part of the collage, there's these baseball players. And this is also part of the, I guess you could say, uh, sarcastic or tongue-in-cheek aspect of this work where he cut out something from the a sports section, and there is a, a kid offering some flowers to a pitcher. Okay, and uh, but we don't know what team they were or whatever. I mean, baseball was is was at the time. I mean, now I don't know. Was played a lot. They had their teams, um, so it's something that did appear in the newspaper. I mean, like Excelsior. 
Okay, so this was, I don't know if this appeared in the Excelsior itself, but this was a typical ad in the newspaper. Okay, this is for cigarettes called Champion Extra Cigarettes. All right, and the point being is that a lot of these images were made up of photographs or they were drawn by hand. This looks like a photograph, but, but the, the uh, cigarette carton was probably drawn, you know, ink. And the lettering, obviously, it's all this probably done by hand. This was, uh, you know, what the commercial artists did. Uh, that's one of the things they did. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. I mean, that style of doing drawing by hand doesn't exist anymore. But it was very common in those days. And here in his uh, in his uh, collage is, uh, you know, an ad for beds. It says, double bed llamas. The most modern and functional. I think this was like a bunk bed thing that folded up. Okay. And so again, it's the line work. He takes the lines from the beds and then he echoes it through the rest of, of the drawing or a collage. Okay. Here's another example. Carritos was, I mean, I grew up on those. And now they sell them in the States, in the supermarket around the corner. Here in Colorado, you can buy them. Uh, and this drawing. It looks like the the bottles are photographs, and then they drew around it this this you know box, which they used to, which they used to take the uh, the soda pops to the corner store. The hand is drawn by hand. In uh, the, the the stove, Deller, okay, also drawn by hand. All right, it's that kind of thing. So in this part of the collage is. Uh, I think it's a Super 8 camera, but it's upside down. This is before a video. All right. Um, can't really tell who made it. Maybe it's like a Bell and Howe or something like that. But, you know, again, this is uh, the type of ads. Or right here's Philip. Now there's these radios or photographs and then everything else. I mean, the typesetting, I don't know how they did that, but. The other figures are drawn by hand. Um, this one here with the children's toys, same thing. So my father being, you know, he was a draftsman and a designer, besides being an artist painter, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. He really liked doing this stuff to him. Drawing was a very important thing for him, just like writers write. For him, drawing is, you know, to draw every day is an important thing in life as a creator and everything else. Not only that, the uh, lettering, there were these templates called Leroy, or Leroy, we used to call them Leroy. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's how the lettering was done. So this is, you know, again, all hand done. They're kind of cute. Okay, this is another type of ads. This is the uh, Perros con Suerte didn't have, uh, you know, anything like this, but here is a there's an advertisement for a development called Satellite City, so that's a daily thing. So, you know, it's the life of suburbia, the guy in, in a coat and a tie sitting in the front of his house painting a little painting. <laughs> and this other one where I guess if you had a tower in Ciudad Satellite, this one on the right, it's possible to to have a view like that. Of course, you know, there was no that would be on a smogless day, all right? No pollution. And then you can see in the front, things are very, there's no development. All that now is all filled up, okay? So this is uh, also, he took an image, a photograph from, uh, from a newspaper. And this photograph I actually located on the internet. It's a photograph of people in the park of the Alameda probably in the 1920s or 30s. I don't, seems to be a well-known photograph. I don't know who did it or where it came from. But that's also, oddly enough, I, that I did locate, and it's, it's part of the lodge. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, as I said, the uh, Perros con Suerte is Dogs who are in luck, or lucky dogs, or, or dogs who have luck, okay, an ad for 
flee. So the the the, the uh, mixed media work is a joke, um, but it's still Gersho. Um, it's comes after this period, which is uh, early Altiplano, and the name of this is Paisaje 1957. This is a reproduction. This is the reproduction of the day uh, of the episode. Um, inkjet archival, properly framed, last 70 to 100 years. Obviously not in the direct sunlight, placed in the direct sunlight. It's available at uh, Trident Booksellers in Boulder. They have a website um, where you can, you know, the A shop. Okay. Uh, there's a link from my website, www.gunthergersha.com. J U N T H E R G E R Z S O dot com. It's a long one altogether. And you go to, you know, shop, reproductions, and then link to uh, the the uh, Trident booksellers. Okay. I um, hope this is useful. I will, I'm planning to, I hope I will have other YouTubes on other of his unusual works. The usual works have been talked a lot about in books, and and I gave a lecture, and uh, which is also on YouTube, the first one of this channel, which is a set designer who, who, who painted. Okay, that was the presentation at the Denver Art Museum. Then there is the there is the one of the Trident Booksellers, which is Gunther Gershow, surrealistic Mexican painter. That was the first one I posted about a year and a half ago, uh, or a little bit more. Okay, and sort of the overall characteristics of or aspects of his career are dealt with in those in those two, and they're about an hour long. Okay, um, so I guess we're done, and with that I withdraw.